I'm looking around and seeing the stalwarts and the and the pillars of the community. Um, and Henry, you're supposed to be sitting up here. You're a member of the board of directors. Really. But you can stay there if you want. I'll go up there next to Kate. So a big, big welcome to uh, Henry White. Um, and uh, before any other business, I just want to thank and uh, give a, a tremendous thumbs up to the staff of NCTV who make this place absolutely vital and humming and terrific. And I'm really grateful to all of you for that. Thank you very much. Mm. Um, oh, sure. It's more than weird. <laughs> um, so first order of business, as Al said, we do have a quorum, which means that we uh, can uh, conduct official business. And should an issue come up where we need to have a vote, we will be able to vote on it. Um, and the first item of business is the director's report from Al, which you've got copies of. Um, and then after that, we don't have any official business to conduct as a board, but we will open the floor to um, members for questions and proposals. Thanks. Um, I think it'll be okay, actually. I'll be okay. Um, there are there are other copies. Is there another copy there? Dave's getting you one right now. So. Um, you have an annual report in front of you. It's a somewhat lengthy document, so I'm, I'm just going to try to hit some key points from it from everyone. Um, as I said, it should be up online tomorrow. We'll, we'll put it up. And you'll also see some revisions to it. This is something that happens every year in that um, finances, the financials are, are present as of, I think the recent, most recent run of them was last Friday. But when we do end of year financials, we post those uh, as a finally updated document on the website so that... Um, just to ensure transparency. Um, other things that we don't see in here are our rules and policies document. We didn't make any significant changes to rules and policies document this year. Um, the reason we don't tend to print it out is because we feel guilty just printing out this much paper. And so, um, so that, that's a, that would add a substantial chunk to this document. And so um, that, that is available on our website. So if you need, want to look at that document, it's still up there on, on the site. Um, so a couple of key points for this year, uh, and you'll see page numbers on the, that we had an intern kindly draw in because we forgot to put them on the printout. But um, <clears throat> on page one on your inside cover are just some key points from this year. Um, one of the big key points, obviously, we, we, we were able to acquire our third channel from Comcast in the agreement between, under the agreement between the city and that cable provider. Um, it's channel 23. Um, my regular joke is we're going to do these LeBron James, Michael Jordan, channel 23 commercials. Um, we launched Paradise City Press this year. This was certainly one of the, the biggest uh, points of the year. It's a citizen journalism program, um, including photojournalism, video production, audio storytelling, etc. We conducted classes relating to that as well. Um, we were awarded the honor of best website in the country by the Alliance for Community Media for a professional community media center. Um, we became one of only 23 partners in Mozilla's beta multimedia program for youth education and cloud uh, editing. It's called Popcorn. Um, that's going to go public in January, February as version one. Um, we're probably going to take a look at implementing that version one somehow in our own uh, curriculum as well. Um, we, we started teaching HDSLR technology to uh, members of NCTV. Um, this, is, this is also a radical jump in quality and the kind of uh, training and the kind of product we're producing. We developed curriculum for Northampton High School students. We've been conducting two-week workshops with them uh, over the past eight weeks um, in small groups ranging from six to about 10. Uh, we returned a call for comments by the FCC regarding the state of community media and our comments were public, published in Communications Daily Magazine. We saw a, con a continued dramatic rise in our social networking. We have roughly 300 uh, Twitter followers and 900 Facebook likes. Uh, which is pretty significant for an organization our size and very significant for a community media organization. That's, that, that's 
larger than stations as large as Cambridge have on in their social media networks. Um, I served as vice chair, uh, honorably, in the Alliance for Community Media. In a partnership with Forbes Library, we ran a grant-funded youth film create uh, filmmaking program over a course of four Saturdays. We had feature articles published about us in the Valley Advocate, in Premier Magazine, in the Hampshire Gazette. Uh, began covering Northampton Planning Board meetings. That's something the public has asked of us for quite some time, and we've begun doing that for about two months now. Uh, we had over 30 interns this year, spread between five college systems, Springfield College, Westfield State, Fitchburg State, and the New England Institute of Art. And the New England Institute of Art specifically recommended us to that student as the best community media center in Western Mass. So I don't know how that rumor got started or fact got revealed is maybe where I could. Um, but we were happy to hear that. <clears throat> so there's good press about us out there somewhere along the grapevine. Um, we hosted a student par partnership with PVPA and the Paidea, uh, Paidea session. Um, and it's a three-week session. It's like an interim session where students are asked to go and find local cultural or art organizations to partner with. And that student from PVPA, if you were here at the five-year party, he spoke along with his partner who goes to Northampton High School. Um, and at some point, you'll see this clip in our, in our highlight clip. It'll come up there. But um, they spent about 100 hours producing a nine-minute original piece, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, we became the first online curator for Five College Film Festival and subsequently curated the advanced documentary class work from Five College System, the Regional Youth Film Festival, the Hampshire Col County Rail Trails Video Contest, and we partnered with other community member, uh, media centers in airing the Transition Towns Film Festival. So that's been something we've, we've been actively pursuing and trying to be um, curators for content of local films. And we've been doing pretty good work towards achieving that goal. Uh, we met uh, with members of representatives of the Berkshire Film Commission, with Wired West, with Hidden Tech, and with the Mass Broadband Institute. In fact, Hidden Tech is um, is visioning out an event to specifically have at NCTV for those uh, technology specialists across the valley. Uh, we pr produced the accreditation video for Northampton High School, uh, which they presented to NEASC. Uh, we've been exploring collaborative relationships with WXOJ Valley Free Radio. Uh, partnered with Free Press to produce a piece by Joe Torres, who is a media policy expert, journalist, and author of a book called News for All People, The Epic Story of Race in the American Media. Uh, we expanded the facility by creating a community edit suite that you probably walked through to get here in what we call the Orange Room. So those are highlights um, of sort of the activities that we've been conducting this year. Um, if you move through the document, you'll see there's a section on programming and membership. And what this shows is our total number of historic members and active members, including our estimate of new certifications. Um, we gained 126 members this year who had never been with the organization before. Um, and there have been 182 active members of the organization, meaning these are people who have, who, who have done business with us of some sort in the past year. Okay, that's in, that counts both new and historic members. Um, and that's 114 new certifications. Um, that's the most new certifications we've had in our five-year history. Uh, we added some workshops, the DSLR workshops, uh, flip camera workshop or flip camera training, uh, citizen journalism workshop, and we began teaching Adobe CS6 uh, while we still support Final Cut Pro 7. So we offer both those, those uh, pieces of software as platforms. The reason we really chose to move to CS6 is because uh, there's some concern about Final Cut Pro X as a, as a tool that's gonna be used professionally moving forward. And we're trying to really provide, um, you know, economic, you know, be an economic resource for people for career development, et cetera. Uh, moving on from there, you see days of producer equipment use. This is this really this number more than anything represents the past year that we've had at NCTV, and it's it's 1,817 days of producer equipment use. If you look at the next at that, I give you the historic figures here. In 2008, we had 155. The next year, we were very proud to go to 248. Then very proud to go to 425. Then very excited to go to 598. So we went from 598 to 1817. That is a that is an enormous jump. That's tripling our that's tripling our traffic in one year. Okay, so 
Um, now, realize that some of those numbers are interns, intern uses as well, but it's been very busy around here. In fact, um, a year ago, we wouldn't have predicted how even the purchases that we, we sort of made this year because of the amount of traffic we've had. So it's been very, um, it's been an intense year for staff and um, it's been really exciting. So we're, very, we're really happy to see that traffic and we're hoping that it continues to increase, but we hope it doesn't triple again next year. Um, so those represent checkout days and bookings of edit suite or use of studio is what those numbers mean. Following that, you're gonna see a list of productions, all the productions that occurred this year. And this is a pretty long list and we break it into program produced with NCTV equipment and then other program airing on NCTV. So those two big numbers on page four, 630 pr productions by members, or not necessarily by members, but using NCTV as a resource, um, including staff productions, and 1,684 that were um, produced outside of NCTV. Now, that can be members who produce those programs on their, using their own equipment, um, and then bring them into NCTV for air. They could be um, feeds we pull off of satellite, it could be they come from a variety of sources, but we're trying what we're trying to measure with these metrics is, um, you know, how much how much production is flowing through this facility in one way or another, not including distribution. Um, that list continues until page eleven. Um, some of these reports, the financial report you'll see at the end of the document. The equipment purchases you will see, as indicated, towards the end of the document. Um, fundraising, we raised $1,556 through fundraising this year. This, uh, that's, that number actually does not include a grant, the grant, which should be in there. So uh, we'll probably have to amend that in a, in, a, in a future number. But fundraising has not been a historical priority for staff in this organization's history. Um, as per every year, our financial advisor uh, advises us not to have an audit at this time because our books are very simple. Um, rules and regulations, as indicated earlier, are available online. And then there's a section on feedback that's a couple of pages long. So the f this feedback, these quotes come from a variety of sources. Um, they come from emails that are sent to us. They come from uh, Facebook posts, Facebook messages to us. They come from mass live comments about us that are directed directly towards us. Um, in some cases, they come from letters. Um, I don't think we have any that come from phone calls on here. But uh, I try to admit people's names, so you may see a couple of dash marks once in a while just to protect the innocent. Um, and so most of, these are, most of these are very positive comments, not all of them. Um, you know, we, we like to put the good and the bad feedback in here. And so um, in general, they're very positive. If you go to the bottom of page 14, I start to just summarize what most of our negative feedback. And the reason I summarize that is, this is these are areas of, of, of growth and, and direction for us. Um, one of those is that there have been regular sustained requests by residents to have NC pro, NCTV programming closed captioned. Um, this, is, this is something we've explored in the past um, and it's been too costly for our organization. The FCC requires closed captioning uh, for all television programming and broadcasters in the US with certain exemptions. Hmm. Um, someone's calling with a question. No, the, uh, there's a hardship exemption, which means we, we are under a certain number in operating budget, which, make, which, which means that we are not required to caption our programming. I think it would be, um, it's, it's certainly not realistic at this point for us to consider captioning 100% of everything we air, but what we have agreed to do is go back again and take a look at some of those numbers and see if they've changed. Um, because we have had, there are repeated requests that the mayor's office receives, that we receive. There is a significant hard of hearing community here in Northampton um, at Clark School and outside of Clark School. And so it's, uh, it's something we'd love to do with for government meetings in particular, and we're gonna just take a look at exploring that again. Um, at, with, at least with the, you know, so we have an updated response to this and we have numbers that we can break out and hand out to people and sort of um, maybe explore, you know, possibly grants to get some of this done. Um, the need to increase our efficiency in, distribu in distribution of government coverage. And so what I mean by that is people want meetings up as soon as they're done. 
And that's not very realistic because there's a whole process to getting those meetings online and on our website that is that does take time. Um, Right, as Jeremy said, did you pick up that audio on camera, do you think? We're looking at, so we're looking at some other options to do that. It's it's a curse of success. I mean, people are people are really driving towards our, our web presence to get those, to look at those meetings because they don't want to have to schedule time around when they're going to be on air and they still want to be able to surf through them. They're probably looking for very specific data. So it's a priority for our audience. So we'll, we're going to continue to look to look at those solutions. Um, there have been times when the NCTV website has contained old information or been unresponsive. Um, you know, there are a variety of, of just instances where it happens once in a while. Again, we hear these complaints because there's a lot of web, tra web traffic we're, we're, we're sort of generating. Um, there's a need for us to be more rigorous in the manner in which we manage interns. Some of this feedback came from our, from our interns, so we're, we're, uh, we've scheduled some meeting time for staff just to, just to, uh, to have a better plan. We think we can do a better job with with interns in general. We have some here who may have comments about on that later. But um, it's we've never handled this many interns before, and so we, uh, you know, we it wasn't all negative feedback. Don't get me wrong by interns, but I think it's something staff recognizes that uh, we want to handle a little bit better. Um, there's a continuous flow of requests from individuals and organizations who want an event covered or production created, but who themselves do not have time or interest in doing so. This is just sort of a this is always the case. This has been the, you know, this is a just, just sort of the lay of the land criticism. Um, what we can do is just continue to try to foster uh, resources, meaning uh, leveraging nonprofit organizations to try to find their own volunteers and, and to try to try to utilize our own our own volunteers and try to convince people to come through the door. So, um, so we expect we'll continue to get those comments. The nice thing about that criticism is people know we're out there. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> staffing and intern changes is the next section. We acquired two staff this year, meaning we added a full-time position, and one of the people who was employed with us, Gary Rivis, left at the beginning of the year. Um, he went to Channel 40 to be lead engineer on their trans transition to HD transmission. It's not easy to say. Um, and our two new staff people are, are here with us today. And um, Dave started in February. Dave Newland started, and he is our, he's now our production coordinator. And Jen Ramsey, who's behind the camera today, is our media resources coordinator. I think you all know him, and they've been phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, so those are our, the two new members of our team. We, I also list out all the interns. I hope I didn't miss anyone. In 2012, there in a paragraph, there's about 30 of them there. Um, and Following that large paragraph of college students, are we list our high school interns who were Will Madison, Maddie Covey, Bella, Will, and Gabe, um, as well as our Paidea students. And in addition, through Holyoke Community Enterprise, we host two students, Umar Razak and Dan Goldstone. So they come in and they, uh, they require a little bit more staff intensive um, interaction. Um, that group is, is tries to find employment for, I don't know, I don't know how you qualify their mission, but, but they're non-traditional students. So that's 2012 in however long that took. Uh, moving on from there, we go to the 2013 general plan. Um, just a couple of broad points here. One is the refinement of Paradise City Press. Um, we feel very good about the half year we've had. It's been about six months since we released Paradise City Press. Um, there have been about 160, 167 posts created on Paradise City Press in that time. So extending that over a year is somewhere around 334 posts over the course of a year, which is almost one a day. Um, not so bad. Uh, we The one thing, the one area which you can improve Paradise City Press is it's really been largely driven 
by staff and interns. We haven't had the traction with general public as much as we would like. And so that, that's really what we have to vision towards during the next year. It takes time to, to sort of generate this kind of uh, momentum in projects like this. And we hope to just keep, uh, you know, casting a net out there and, and get more people through the door and have more of uh, citizenry generated quant or, excuse me, content on that site as opposed to relying on staff and inter interns so much. Um, it's also a potential for us to look at funding sources. Uh, this is citizen journalism is a pretty hot buzzword these days, and there um, we're going to explore some grant opportunities for for supporting that as well. Uh, the second main point for the next year is establishing the identity of the third channel, channel twenty three. Um, that means looking at all three of our channels and figuring out how we're going to spread programming across it. It also means installation of a new server system, which we've been, we've been looking at for some time now. Um, it's been a little bit more complicated than uh, than we originally sensed. One reason is we're looking at high definition servers, and that involves replacing other equipment as well in that in that transportation stream. Examining collaborations with other public media entities and community makers. Um, NCTV has re recently begun the process of examining ways in which it can partner with other established public and community media entities to merge resources, create efficiencies, and establish a shovel-ready identity as a national leader and example of a functioning next-generation community media center. These talks have included discussion with Valley Free Radio and, tr and traditional media community television centers such as Amherst Media and Greenfield Community Television. At some point in the future, Congress will re-examine the Federal Telecommunications Act, which is the act that allows for funding of a facility like this. The multimedia landscape is undergoing what may be the largest revolution in its history. Both of these situations point to one thing. Community media centers need to expand their services and conceptualize and reimagine the services they provide the community. We've already laid groundwork towards this end in becoming an online curator for a number of local film festivals and launching our citizen journalism project and laying the groundwork for supporting local creators in a number of ways. The idea here is that <clears throat> we have to sort of invent what tomorrow's community media center is going to look like before the argument happens. So that um, when Congress looks out over the landscape, there are examples of centers that are already doing next generation work. And they are more inclined to, to continue supporting these kinds of projects, these kinds of uh, centers. Uh, revisiting our rules and policies. This is a goal actually of ours for this year. Um, due to the amount of traffic we've had through the facility, some of some of our 2012 goals, as happens most years, did not were not complete. But we do need to relook at these rules and policies. We may even want to look at um, some of the more fundamental organizational documents, uh, like the bylaws. Um, if we didn't have a quorum tonight, for instance, uh, there was nothing in the bylaws that directed us specifically into what the next moves were. So just some just some house cleaning. We've been an organization for five years now. Um, <clears throat> a lot of those documents and policies were written, you know, at a time before we were an organic group. And so it's just smart to go through those and, and figure out what's working and what's not. Uh, begin prepping for contract negotiation. So we're three years out from when we need to sign, when the city needs, excuse me, we collectively, meaning the organization in the city, really needs to sign a new contract um, involving the mayor, the cab board, NCTV staff, NCTV's board will all be stakeholders in this discussion. All members of NCTV will be key stakeholders in this discussion. But we should start, this is around the time that people, rec that it's recommended that we start ascertaining um, the state of our organization, what we're going to need out of a next contract, what the public wants, what the membership wants um, out of their community media organization. So <clears throat> we started a discussion in that regard already, planted a couple of seeds, and we'll start moving forward on that in 2013. Um, information management. So uh, to, over the busy year that we've had, it, it's become apparent that we, we need to reexamine some of the way, ways we handle information around the station. Um, that just means better database um, usage. So that's for equipment check-in and check-out, for membership tracking, for facility usage, etc. So we're looking at mostly software-driven solutions. You know, four years ago, you had to fill out a paper form to join NCTV. Now you can go onto the website and join and request a program for AIR in a matter of 10 minutes. So we've made strides towards that. We just need to, we need to step it up another level. And then we have ongoing yearly goals, which is just to extend outreach into the community, create a fuller network of producers and partners, uh, increase access to our facility, 
um, ensure fairness in policy, expand programming produced by staffs, interns, volunteers, and membership, um, capital projects that are ongoing, and so on. <coughs> That's our vision for 2013. Um, you'll see some informational documents or pages that, that follow that, um, including a list of our board members and staff, a list of all of our equipment purchases, our capital equipment purchases over pages 20 and 21, and then a balance sheet and a profit and loss accounting sheet for the remainder of the document. Um, in addition, Uh, election ballots were due today, and we uh, we have results for those elections. Uh, David Pakman was reelected to a three-year term on the board of directors. Uh, <laughs> Robin Barber was elected for a two-year term on the board board of directors. Barbara Golden was elected for a one-year term on the board, and Kate Way for a three-year term. So we have what you see before you. Uh, we're going to be losing Cloda as a board member. She's termed out. Um, she'll be probably moving to cab board to continue her work in support of the organization. <laughs> so um, it's been great having Cloda and, and, and we will get another cab board appointee so there will be one member that the cab board appoints over the next month or so. Uh, yep. The cab board appoints that member. Uh -huh. They can appoint whoever they like. It's not required that that person be a member of the cab board. The only person it can't be is Cloda. <laughs> uh, she has, she has, our rules and our, our governing document, our bylaws prevent that at this point. After a year, I think Cloda could be appointed. Otherwise, it can be anyone. I don't think there are any parameters whatsoever in the appointment process by cab board. Um, I don't believe the city council approves it, and I also don't believe. Um, it's limited whatsoever. I mean, they could appoint some from someone from Hawaii if they wanted, I guess. Well, it, it seems sensible to point out that this is the time to, to make suggestions to the council. If, if you have in mind a person who you think would accept serving on the board to represent the cab board during this time when we're going to be ascertaining <coughs> what we want in our renegotiation, very important. So if you have someone in mind, by all means suggest it to Al or to Coda, and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can move that. Um, the last thing is every year we give out a Producer of the Year Award, and um, she's not here tonight. Unfortunately, I thought she was going to be here. Jessica Tanner has won our Producer of the Year Award. Uh, we've got a gift certificate for her. We hoped she was going to be here. She was going to try to make it. She had another, other, a number of other meetings to run around to, and uh, that just probably is an indication of her dedication to community work. And so um, we will see her soon. And But we just wanted to honor her. Um, it's the first Carl Russo Producer of the Year Award. Um, and we're going to have a plaque we're going to put up, too, with all the past winners. Um, Henry White's a former winner, is now on the board of directors. <laughs> um, and so Alicia Ralph is here, Dan Vasquez. So, um, hey. And so uh, we were just explaining uh, Jessica Tanner won the Carl Russo Award. And so, uh, so congratulations to Jessica. And that's the submission of, uh, of the annual report. Does anyone have questions? Is this a proper time for questions? Yeah. Questions or comments? Yeah, it's, it's a, we're, we're, we are. We are looking at both those things. The shift in hours, we think, a um, couple thoughts on this a shift in hours. I think the weekend is the next thing we, we want to probably open up a day of. Um, we, we are, our hours have extended every year and we've talked about weekends for a while, but I think that's something we probably can handle now with, we, with increased staff. Um, the other thing we're realizing is 
you know, when we we're open till 10 p.m., that's probably too late for most people because we get almost no traffic from 9 to 10 p.m. So you probably will see some recommendations of shifts in our hours where we'll be open later, but probably not as late as 10 on one or two nights. We've already had some of those discussions about adding another night and then looking at the weekend as something we'll do in 2013. I think, you know, historically we were sort of pulled into this schedule because we're trying to be available to students in the high school as well as, you know, there's sort of, there are different forces at work kind of. So, um, so I think it deserves, it definitely deserves looking at and it's something we're going to, we're going to examine. It's, and, and thanks for the comment. Other questions, comments, suggestions, complaints? Well, I guess that uh, uh, our our next o item of business is to move to adjourn. Um, I kind of hate to do it because it's it's so much fun to have everybody together in one room at one time, but uh, that's what we that's what we need to do. Unless there are further questions. All right. I'm gonna make one comment. I just wanna make a comment. Um, just to thank, again, reiterate and thank all of the staff here and particularly Al, because it's incredibly impressive what has been accomplished in this past year, but in the past five, six years of the station. I'm gonna say five, it's been kind of five to six years. And it's so exciting to see this as a community um, resource and particularly I think the feedback the negative feedback is really interesting it's n it's not really negative it, it, it's exactly what you said it's about our growth and um, it kind of tells us that we have a future and just you know just to make decisions and, and kind of put more energy into fundraising um, that was one of the things that came to my mind now is how do we actually look to and I know I was supposed to be responsible maybe now that I'm off the board I'll try and get more involved in um, but getting the community involved because it's great to hear that people are coming here and looking for this as a resource but I think we also need to make the community look to this and help support it as well so I think there's got to be some reciprocity here where you know the community gives back to NCTV and we give to the community I'd like to see that as part of uh, the future thank you Al Sorry for interrupting that question. That's not an interruption. Um, yeah, there's a lot that we could do in that department. Uh, you know, the, Al mentioned the uh, the growth of NCTV as a community media center. <clears throat> and I think the long-range goal of that is that when cable has gone away and there's no revenue stream from Comcast anymore, that this place would still be here and still be functioning. And that's a really tall order. That's a lot that would need to happen in order for that to uh, be true. Um, but I think we'd all be really, really sad to see the place go away just because old Comcast wasn't handing us whatever it is, 60 cents on each membership. Well, actually, it's the community that are giving us the 60 cents. True. They have. That's the way it was structured. It just looks that way. No, you're right. To, you're right to point that out. <clears throat> so, many thanks for coming, and uh, stay in touch. Yeah, I probably need a motion. Oh, a okay. I'll make a motion to um, adjourn. Clodagh's last motion. <laughs> I'll second it. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs>